everyone. Thanks again once again for tuning in to Forest Talk. I'm here with my high school alumni, Drew. And we're going to talk about how long should you wait before you move in with your significant other. I could tell you from my personal experience, it was a year before my husband and I moved in when we were just courting at that time. I think a year is good because a year is enough time to get a good feel for the man and he get a good feel for you and see if it's going to work. You get the chance to wait around, see what a little quirks and twerks and shit that you don't like or what you do like or you get a good feel if this person really wants to make a life commitment to you mm -hmm. because I don't see any reason to just move in with somebody just to play house to me now I have to consider you your schedule what you got going on I gotta consider you know I might want to go get something to eat and shit and I gotta worry about you I'm not doing all that shit for somebody just to play house with I mean that's just my opinion <laughs> but Hey, whatever floats your boat. But I think one year is a good time. That's how long it took for me. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? At what stage in life are we talking about? I say maybe when you're really ready to be in a relationship, in a committed oh. relationship. Not just coming out of high school. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're not talking about that. You gotta be pretty mature. I think that, once again, I don't know if there's a time frame, but I think if this is a person that you want to spend the rest of your life with, one, I am a full on believer in you need to live with somebody before you get married to them. I got some very, very close friends who don't subscribe to that. God bless them. I think it's important. You need to ask yourself before you decide if this is what you want to do, like how much you really care about this person and how much you care about the relationship because it is a high probability that once you move in with somebody that y'all could break up. Yes. I don't think that you need to know what somebody is like on a all day basis when you get pissed at him or her and you can't leave because y'all both at home. Can you deal with that? That's the point. When you're just dating somebody and they just coming over to kick it, you can straighten up if you're a messy person. But if you just messy all the time and you only clean up when you have a company, that might be a turnoff for somebody else. How long? I don't know. Is it important? Hell yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I know many people have very religious beliefs and they believe that everything should start after I do. Yeah, but and, they didn't already fuck this person probably. So that's what I, you know, these yeah. halfway religious people, I, you know, that's going to be a whole nother topic. It to is. Me. But keep in mind, you know, people, not to stereotype everybody, but I would say people over 50 or uh, in their mid 50s are probably more prone to think that way. That's different. Yeah. yeah, I know y'all. Come on now. Y'all know y'all busting it wide open. <laughs> and let's not even play these games. So half of y'all probably you know, fucking the dude within the first two weeks or he, you, whatever. You know, because I don't want anybody to say I'm making it one way. Yeah, I think back to the whole energy thing too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think again, when I say these timelines like one year, that's just a safe time. Sure. It could be sooner. It might be six months. Maybe you guys are really vibing and are like, let's do this. I think though, what you're saying, you can move in with someone and break up with them, but at the same token, I feel like you should really have a good feel for a person before you move in with them. I'm going to assume you've been spending some nights together before mm -hmm. this goes on, so how much could this person really be hiding or you just choose to be dumb and walk around with fucking blinders on your eyes? And if that's what you're doing, then that's some motherfucking problem how too. How much could they really be hiding? Yeah. That is a very, very dangerous question. It is, but if you're with the person, y'all may not live together, but the, you've been cohabitating so much. Mm -hmm. You might have your own place, but nine times out of ten, you're over her house. Mm -hmm. After a while, you get enough days of that, something's going to fall out the closet. Maybe, but I've literally been around people, not necessarily a significant other, people for years and not known certain things about them so if a motherfucker got a skeleton and they want to keep that bitch buried they can hide it that's true they put a padlock on them up yeah like it could be right up under your nose too like you would mm. certain things you know what i mean just yeah. so that you would you wouldn't necessarily correlate with this individual but it's going to be interesting to see like these few friends that i have who who don't believe in living with their girlfriend if they decide to actually turn that into a marriage, how that actually plays out, because they do. 
they spend a lot of time over one another's house, but then they get up and they leave. But it's just something different. And I speak from experience. Women, you y'all are different after y'all have kids. Y'all are different after you get married. Y'all just are different. I don't know if it's something chemically. I don't know what the hell it is, but y'all just be different. And we could be too. I, you know, I'm a man. I don't deal with other men. I deal with women. So I can say for certain that y'all change a little bit. Sometimes for the good, sometimes things get a little shaky on the other end of it. If it's okay if, if I ask, mm -hmm. specifically what do you see or you notice from your vantage point mm -hmm. that change? And this is good and bad. Okay. Are we from any of those scenarios I just named or from the living with aspect? From after you've gotten married, after the kids. After children, you guys tend to become a lot more possessive than you may have been before. And if you were possessive beforehand, it just intensifies. There's then becomes this entitlement thing, a sense of, you feel like you're, not you, but what I've noticed or what I've experienced is your old explanations about certain things that never were of conversation before. Mm. Little okay. things. Like, and it's like, where the fuck did this come from? Since when did this become an issue? Since when did we start talking about this. But you can spin that and turn that into something positive. You can create better communication between the two. But when it comes out of nowhere, it's a little shocking to us. It's something to have to deal with that you never dealt with before. The only significant life event that happened was the birth of our child. And damn, like, you, you looking like a different person over here. So do you feel kind of like, was it safe to say that before kids and before, not specifically, we're not mm -hmm. speaking specifically on your marriage or your relationship. Mm -hmm. So I don't want you to feel like, you know. Come on with it. Do you feel like the woman has become less fun? No, I don't want to say that. Okay. I don't, don't want to say less fun. But I will say a lot more serious. Okay. Which is understandable. To a certain degree, but there's another life in the hands of two people. It's understandable. Mm -hmm. If the scope of the issues is surrounding what impacts the child, but if it's something that's frivolous, mm -hmm. that was never of topic before, but it is now, like what changed? Like why are you feeling or thinking this way when nothing happened? The only thing that's happened was I was the last one of my siblings to have a child. A lot of my friends had killed for, and they all told, "Yeah, bro, you gonna be, you gonna be different." I'm like, yeah, you know, I didn't see the worst of the worst from from her. Ain't nothing gonna change. Boy, was I wrong? Boy, was I wrong? I mean, and it couldn't have been that bad because we ended up getting married afterwards. It's just different. Like I, I don't know. Did your husband tell you that he seen anything different in you when y'all had y'all first kid? After y'all had y'all first kid? Yeah, not in that way. Because see, here's the thing, and I know. Apparently, a lot of people I went to school with really don't know my personality. I didn't. I didn't know you was this fucking funny until <laughs> a couple months ago. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I was in this long-term relationship in high school on and off. And I was kind of in that. And they get to show your personality. Right. I wasn't really doing that. I was on that tip. But I've always been this way. That's the funny part. Hmm. Um, my dad's foolish. And my mom's super serious. And he's... Uh, foolish as hell and they're not together anymore <laughs> i've always been that way but after the kids it was a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on me it was like you're going out you're having a fun if you want to get off work and do you you can do that whereas i don't have the option if i'm stopping somewhere after work it's probably get some milk or some groceries and then i'm coming straight home i gotta tend to these kids i gotta do all the stuff that involves with family and kids mm -hmm. my life has came to a halt i'm with kids all day or at work and then it's like i need you to be home because you helped me make this like don't let me suffer alone sure. while you're out playing I'm not saying my husband is playing or anything but but I can tell you at that time he was getting more free time than I was. So it was a lot for me because I, and then I had another one right after that. Well, I was working midnight, so I already can potentially put you in um, psychosis. Sure. And then I had to work those midnights and then come home and then nurse one baby and coddle the other. 
because they were stair steps so that was a difficult time for me but outside of that like I, I can't really speak on that because I'm the one who likes to have a good time and my husband's the one like I mean you got chill you know all that <laughs> but it works though you know because you can't have two people that's just off the chain all the time we are balanced we're really close that's what's up yeah so uh, yeah but I've heard that mm -hmm. I've heard that and I, I think it just has something to do with as mothers we become protectors and then mm -hmm. when we become wives we're protective of you i know like my husband used to always be like yeah you you acting like my mama shit you know you you keep on asking me this and that and it's not that i'm trying to be your parent i'm looking out for you sometimes you can really i know from my perspective like i love my husband dearly i couldn't imagine if i had to come back to the planet 10 more times mm -hmm. i would choose him every time if he was available That's there right. wouldn't be nobody else for me it's it's terrifying sometimes to me to think of a scenario or like let's say i see you just as an example you're drinking too much right i didn't see you had three four drinks hey, hey you got to hey you being my mama but here's the thing like i'm concerned about you that's it's not good for you i mean every once in a while you do it okay fine just an example and then it's like you're parenting but the person doesn't want to see they their intentions is well for you they want you to be well because hell i want you to stay with me i don't want you to check out i'm 55 and i'm by myself that's where i be coming from a lot of times i maybe that's where other women be as well i think sometimes it's just it takes time though relationships take time dude. Mm -hmm. to get that even balance i know and look we didn't go on all the way off on to right. other topics that's cool that's so a good conversation it is and i hope you guys are enjoying this i really feel like in a marriage the when we moved in he and i moved in together it was an adjustment mm -hmm. we got over that adjustment and it wasn't nothing crazy like mess or anything like that but it's like okay it, this is the type of adjustment that i had to go through my family you got the call for you come over my crib you can't just be popping up well his he has a very close-knit family so they would be around <laughs> a lot and that was an adjustment mm -hmm. for me so we had to get over that adjustment we've had different people stay with us really to help us with kids because we don't have a lot of support okay. from our families so that's adjustments it's just been so many adjustments at the end of the day we're like we rock with each other we fuck with each other there is no taking us apart it's but that five the first five years though shit I'm going to tell y'all what y'all need to do, though. This is what really worked for us. Set aside. Uh, it's, it's, and you might not agree, but you can set aside some time. Like, like I'm on, on this porch doing porch talk. He and I will be on the porch at night. We might be both having a drink or something. And just talking about whatever. I don't give a damn what it is. Sometimes He don't necessarily like to talk about everything I like to talk about. I'm typical in certain aspects. Sometimes I be on one and I be extra deep. When I'm just being me my husband's not really into he doesn't like a lot of drama he's not about to be talking about love and hip-hop and all that shit. he don't care nothing about it he, he wants to philosophy all day and talk about politics and talk about but i just go ahead and listen to him and get in where i fit in in that you create this bond we would set aside that time and we got extremely close so, doing that so do you think that you need to your husband's interests need to be somewhat of your interest too? To a degree. I say this. I say you don't have to have the same interests, but you have to be open to listen to where they're coming from and still be able to adjust to that. I've had to sit through episodes of Sex in the City when I didn't want to. You need to sit through some, if you want to spend time, like right. football season, if I'm watching the game, like, and you trying to kick it, you need to... Top a squat. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. You're trying to kick it. Because we don't have a ton of time. We both work full time. Our son keeps us very, very occupied. It might not be of interest to you, but if you want to still have some type of quality time, you, know, you got to sacrifice a little bit. Mm -hmm. Might not be entertaining to you at first, but then you you might realize you actually like it. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I can count on less than half of a hand. My husband has sat and watched any ratchet TV with me. Okay. Well, he I don't will me, fall asleep on. I'm about to say maybe I wasn't necessarily watching it, yeah. but I was 
you were still in the room. Yeah. Your your present. Yeah, and he and he has done that. I will yeah. get to his credit. He has done it. I mean, it's a stuff that he watches. I'll just be there. I think the main deal is people are missing today is the art of compromise. I think the word compromise makes people uncomfortable. If you want the relationship to work. You have to be able to go along to get along. And the end goal with everything has to be, I want to be in this relationship. When you start off with that, if you had to brainstorm, you was writing out a chart, at the top it would say, we're going to make this work. Mm -hmm. We're going to win. From that, you begin to figure it out. You know, you got some people that they fly by nights anyway. They already got their foot in and foot out. You got motherfuckers that get married like that they already halfway out the door you just don't fucking know it it's people that have commitment issues just because you get a person to alter don't mean and they say i do don't mean they really did they could be saying i don't they could be saying i do with their mouth and i don't on the inside screaming at you which is why you should never try to force a man to marry you no that ain't, if a good he idea. ain't brought it to you right and i still see it every day women trying to don't give a man an ultimatum Either marry me or I'm gonna leave. Listen, if that's how you feel, then you might just need to leave. Because why would you want to force somebody to do something that they don't personally feel they're ready for? I don't know. Stage in the game, we still see that now. I, I don't think that you should, a woman should, um, hold up her life, waiting for a man to pop the question to him. But I also don't think that you should try to force him if he don't think that he's ready y'all should have a conversation about like okay what are you like what are we doing what are we doing like is your intentions to marry me one day okay yes well i mean well, how close are we to that that time here shit we ain't getting no younger and if you don't think you're gonna be ready for another 10 years then we might need to you know what i mean instead right. of saying if i don't have a ring by this time next year then it's a no no you're yeah. losing already Right, you yeah, you don't want to get people ultimatums because it it puts their back against the wall and now they they're on defense and now they're already in the hell. No, you know how it is when anybody, you can even be your boss at work, they start coming at you wrong. You like man, fuck you and this job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Real talk. Like I mean, shit. I well, anyway, I ain't gonna speak on that. I just know communication is everything you have to be willing to communicate and communicate effectively my dad did a lot of yelling a lot of yelling my mom kind of just took it and i would be like oh she that's kind of some weak shit because i know i would clown but we're different women for instance if i get in a heated discussion with my husband because he's not big on arguing and to me my definition of arguing is when you're screaming and hollering at each other his definition of arguing is disagreeing we could literally become that I don't want to argue with you. It's like, well, how are we arguing? We're just not agreeing. Keep in mind, everybody's interpretation of things are different. If his, if his voice so happens to get elevated, I tend to bring it down. Because at the end of the day, we are close and I don't want to go through that. Not in the beginning, baby, <laughs> I set it off. But now... No. Nah. And I think at the beginning, you're in a relationship, you're so... And, and we didn't really get into it. The stuff came out like, again, when you move in with a person. Because now you're with them all the time. So the little bullshit starts to get on your nerves. Like, uh-uh, I don't like this. And then it starts eating at you and then you become petty. Or mm -hmm. some people do. Most so, <laughs> right. And we're human. Okay, fine, cool, whatever. I could get... I can be on one. I had to grow out of that. Well, I didn't all the way grow out of it, I ain't gonna lie, but I just know when to hold and when to fold. Yeah, as I've gotten older, like, I don't, healthy debate is good, right? And we're two people, you're not gonna agree on everything. Right. But the, the for me personally, the fastest way to, to get me to shut down is you starting to yell and shit. Like, if you don't want anything to come with this conversation, you're gonna start to yell at me. I don't wanna hear that shit, you know right. what I mean? You can get mad, you can be mad. Can't nobody tell another person what should or shouldn't upset them. We don't control the way we feel, we don't control what we think. That shit is just right. involuntary. Okay, cool. That's a conversation all in itself. Absolutely. Okay. And, and you know, we've been told since forever, it ain't what you say, it's how you say it. Yes. So if you feel some kind of way, don't bring it to me yelling at me, especially if you don't got my POV. It's not gonna go well. Most people meet bullshit with bullshit. 
Mm-hmm. So let's talk about it. And then once the con- if the conversation starts to elevate to a point where we're saying irrational things or we're, we're emotionally outbursting, we might need to table this conversation. I've had a number of instances with women where we've, we've gotten into a, a heated exchange and I try to diffuse it by walking away, but y'all just follow a nigga all around the crib, just on your <laughs> heels. Like, what, like what, are you, what are you trying to accomplish here? Like, are you, what do you want to happen? Right now, if I say I don't want to talk, you gonna make me talk? I think that's how some. Okay, so before I give my opinion, you know, I gotta get these disclaimers out for the people who have a hard time um, comprehending. But anywho, um, for you ignorant son of a bitches out there, <laughs> I do not advocate for domestic violence. But listen closely to what I'm about to say. You make any motherfucker mad enough, he been and hit your ass. Hello. So don't keep following his ass around talking about, you know, I, 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 you know, he's not even looking at you as a woman. He's just mad. Yeah. Now he gonna hit your ass, and then, oh, oh no, you now didn't you put your police. hands on me. Oh, yeah. oh, f- this bitch crap. Oh, you know y'all get ignorant as fuck. Y'all know how y'all do. So don't do that. Mm-hmm. Table the conversation. Don't want to walk away. It's cool. I and I then got in some conversations that has gotten, you know, really high. Like, all right, I'm gonna chill because he's really upset. Sometimes he, they just, whatever, it's not clicking. You know, we've all had them conversations, I believe, that you might be saying one thing, your intentions is one way, he's saying something, but y'all not getting the other's point of view. It's just coming off wrong. It's just not it. working. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so sometimes you just got to let it go. My husband doesn't hit me, but I can tell you, you can see when they start, you want to chill that. You you don't even really want to get to that point, honestly. But Here's the thing, though. You know. What I've noticed is, if you've been with a person for a long time, like you know what buttons to push. Right. My question is, why do you want to push that button? Like, why do you want to say something so visceral that you know is going to make this individual's blood? Why do you want to do that? Sometimes people what, just want a reaction. What? Okay, cool. But then when you get that reaction <laughs> and you don't like it, you a victim? Yeah. So, <laughs> let me ask you this, right? Mm-hmm. A guy walking down the street, mm-hmm. he walk up to me, he smack the shit out of me. For no reason. I shoot him. Am I wrong? No, he shouldn't have smacked the shit out of me. I mean, he, you can anticipate anything can come out of that. You got to anticipate that. So, you can't be mad at how I react to what you did. Because if you never did what you did, I wouldn't have been able to react in the first place. Oh, well, you took it too far. How? We live in a world. We live in a soft-ass world. We do. And we also live in a world that there's no consequence or they defend. There's no nuance to anything. Right. It's like, okay, for instance, I don't advocate for rape. But as a scenario, I'm going to use this to illustrate a point. So you have on your thong bikini. And I'm just saying bikini because that's the most skimpiest, simplest thing that I can come up with. And I, I threw a thong in there, mind you. Okay. So you're walking down the alley. You got this motherfucker that's on one. He didn't shot some diesel in his veins. Now, who knows? Okay? <laughs> he could have got into it with baby mama. Who knows what current of crazy ass events that didn't happen in his life. And that's the thing that y'all don't see. You guys don't, people don't anticipate what could be going on with others before they even get into this shit. It'd be a combination of bullshit that's going on. You don't even see. Cause your ignorant ass so used to just doing you and not thinking about what the fuck you're doing. Back to the point. Mm-hmm. You're walking down an alley in these stilettos in this skimpy ass string ignorant ass bikini. Now, he comes up and attacks and rapes you. The humanistic point would say, well, I don't care what you had on, he had no business raping you. And that is true. It's a fact. That's a fact. However, it could be plausible if you had your funky ass covered up, maybe you wouldn't provoke dude. Now, he's sick regardless. It's the point. It's just to illustrate a... Don't, don't put yourself in situations. Stupid ass situations. Mm-hmm. Period. Simply put. Yeah. We got to be smart out here because you can't... 
I mean, y'all be going after your husband or a boyfriend. He might have had a rough day at the job. Maybe the boss embarrassed him or something. It's possible. It could have been uh, um, a boss of another race mm -hmm. that was yelling at, in front of him. Now, if we was outside or if this was 7 Mile, 8 Mile, I'd whoop your ass. If this was Mick Nichols, Grand River, Finkel, Chicago, i beat your ass. But I can't <laughs> because I got to keep my job. I got a wife. I got kids. So I got to be a bitch in front of everybody. And that's really eating me up. Because now I really want to meet you in the parking lot. Now I come home to this. You want to nag and be a bitch. And you want to follow me. And you want to holler over my head. Do you see how. Can you feel the pressure from that situation. If you just for one second try to have some empathy. That's a bit much. Yeah. I know when I come in the door from work. And I probably ain't even got into nobody. I don't. What the what shit. Now what. What y'all want? Shit, you know, people meet me at the door. The dog meet me at the door. I want to know what the fuck he want. What the fuck do you want? Yeah. Why are you sniffing me? I just came from work. I can't even get in the motherfucking door. I'm tripping over shoes. I'm tripping over dogs. I'm tripping over kids. Yo, yo, don't you see your daddy here? Why you asking me for, you know what I'm saying? Shit gets crazy. And I ain't even got into nothing. Mm -hmm. So imagine if he's had a hard day at work. I just think we need to be thinking about that. Do you subscribe to a woman needing to be submissive to her husband? I do. Again, just like the word compromise puts people in the bad head space, the word submissive does as well. Now, let me turn that around and say this. If you got the right man that you're with, mm -hmm. submitting shouldn't be an issue. I ask my husband all the time about stuff before I do things. Because if he doesn't approve, I don't want to do anything that he's not going to approve of. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to ask him first because I don't want him to, yeah, out of respect and I don't want him to be mad with me. It has nothing to do with me being a pussy or a bitch or whatever word y'all want to come up with. It has everything with me being smart and wanting peace in my household. Yeah. I'm going to check with him first now, but at the same time, no, do, should you submit to an idiot? No, but you shouldn't be you with shouldn't an idiot. idiot. I think that men and women both need to learn respect is earned it is not given based on a title okay some people do function like that i know me i don't give a damn who you are you could be a parent if you if you acting crazy and you're being disrespectful then i'm gonna act accordingly that's just how i, I do things I, I can't speak on nobody else but I, I am an advocate for respecting your elders so so don't come at me with that either i don't i don't feel like you should disrespect anybody on the AR, aarp team you shouldn't but there should definitely be defined roles in a relationship. Everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses. And if the relationship is going to be successful, you need to play to the strengths of your partner. Now, with that being said, that's where being submissive kind of comes into play. A lot of women these days, they like to think that they're independent. And a lot of them are. They're very accomplished in their own right. But men are, we're very, very prideful a man's home as his castle certain things out of respect should be positioned to him a certain kind of way for instance i don't want to come home from work and your friends are over and they're parked in my fucking driveway why do why can't i come home and park in my own driveway why are you visiting and you're parking in my driveway when park i go visit street. people i park in front of their home unless i'm told Hey, pull up in the driveway. Mm -hmm. Especially if I know the other mm -hmm. person. Now, if I don't see both cars, right. why am I going to pull in the driveway? Park on the motherfucking street. That's a respect thing. That is a fucking respect thing. And I shouldn't have to tell my wife this more than one time. Right. Because then you're going to make me feel like you don't give a fuck about mm -hmm. how I feel about this. And then that's going to open up a door to a whole bunch of other shit. So, okay. So, now I'm thinking about it. You don't really respect how I feel about people coming and parking in my driveway. And damn, now that I think about it, I told you that I didn't want you to bring this certain brand of bread in here, but you keep it. So you really don't give a right. fuck about nothing I got to right. say. Right, it, it goes said. downhill yeah, after yeah, a while. Because you just start connecting these things. Yeah, like, you need to know <laughs> your mate, but that's what communicate. Like, I can't be mad at you if I never told you this right. and you didn't know. But if I tell you and it continues to happen, a man is gonna think like you just don't respect my position as a man. Like you don't respect me as a man. You don't respect me as your husband. You don't respect me as your boy. Cause you just don't give a fuck about nothing that I say. Mm -hmm. Or your people don't respect you cause you told them, and they keep doing it. And that's another problem. And it then why they keep coming up? Why are they here? Right. 
here's another good point too. You know how I was saying like the word submission and compromise, people get hung up. People mm -hmm. get hung up on titles and words. And I'm gonna tell you, Insecure if you're, people. yeah, mm -hmm. and if you're that type of person, you can come up short. And I'm gonna give you an example. If I'm a boss mm -hmm. and you're my employee, and I know you hung up on titles, I'm gonna give you this title that sound like you some shit and still pay you for some bullshit. And you're gonna accept that because you're worried about the title. Yeah. You're not looking at it from the point of view of where you should be. And that's the end goal, to excel, to do better. Same thing with your relationship. You have to be looking at the end goal. If being submissive and compromising is going to get you the peace and the loving relationship that you want, motherfucker get in line, get in formation. Y'all quick to quote Beyonce, bitch get in formation. Beyonce you know also worth half a fucking billion dollars too. Y'all can't take Beyonce's position that y'all ain't bringing to the table what Beyonce bringing to the table. Furthermore, if I am good with money in the relationship, why wouldn't I handle the money? That's not saying that you're going to be on an allowance. When you get your check, you need to sign that bitch over to me. No, but like if I create a budget for the house, why not stick to this? If, if every time I talk to you, you say, I ain't got no money. Well, you don't think that you might have an issue with spending and budgeting? Which isn't necessarily your fault because a lot of our families didn't teach us about money and how to budget taxes and finance we didn't learn a lot of that shit mm -hmm. so if you got somebody that is clearly good at handling money why wouldn't you want to play to that strength right. if you're a way better cook than me please don't look at me like i'm sexy like because i actually am a better cook than my wife she ain't gonna say that but i'm gonna tell you i'm better cook. you know that don't mean like why wouldn't you prepare the meals or whatever if i'm a better clean i don't know whatever if you, if you have certain strengths, I'm going to rely on you for that. If you're a better communicator, you shouldn't ask me to go have a conversation with the principal when you know one thing gets said, I'm going to cut the fuck up. Like, that's just not being smart and playing to the strengths in the relationship. Right. I think that, I hate to sound like I'm bashing women, because I'm not bashing women. I don't think so. Y'all need to, a lot of women need to let go of feeling like they are giving in to what a man wants when we're very very simple at least I am I'm so simple everything ain't as intricate and tedious of the mind as y'all like to think it is everything that we do isn't calculated like well why did you decide to do this this way I just thought that was easy no because you really did it because you thought that was gonna piss me off and <laughs> I really what this is the type of shit that happens. Like, it's just not... I've, I've witnessed this with my friends' relationships, with, you know, personally, fam... I don't... I just I just don't understand how something that could be so simple could be made to be so difficult. I don't understand. Well, sometimes insanity is not meant to be understood. Hello. If you start to understand it, then you might possibly be insane. If you feel that I'm talking about you and I'm bashing you, we then are. maybe you need to self-reflect and no, get your shit together. You. We're bashing you. It's your crazy ass home somewhere. Why are you 40 and single? Be the crazy. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I can't find a good man. Because you're not a good woman. Ooh, uh-oh. I'm just saying. You are just saying, I mean, I'm not going to argue with that point. You know, nobody's perfect, but come on. So y'all know y'all be on some bullshit now. Shit. <laughs> come on. we Y'all know y'all be on some bullshit. Why are you still trying to look for a spouse in the club? Hello. What is this about? Oh, I might run into somebody. Somebody like who? A headache? That's mm. what you want? Okay, well, fine. Make sure you pack your Excedrin in the bag, the migraine version, for you to go, bitch, because that's what you're about to go pick up, a motherfucking headache. So make sure you have that bottle of Excedrin mm. so you can relieve that headache and go back to it because you're going to get another one. I mean, what is, what What are we doing here? I don't, what is Wasting this about? Time. Waste the motherfucking time and then you wouldn't complain about it along the way. Why? Because it makes for a good story. Mm -hmm. I'ma tell y'all, unless y'all trying to get a role on Mona Scott show, <laughs> loving hip hop, and go for Hollywood, because that's the worst one. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That bitch <laughs> is ridiculous. And I still watch it. I ain't gonna lie, I watch it because I'm used to watching Love and Hip Hop and I'm hoping like maybe this week this show will be entertaining. The best thing about that show is Lazelle. He's funny as fuck to me. Sorry. Shout out to Lazelle. Unless y'all trying to be on Mona Scott, stop all this drama bullshit. 
Y'all just want to have something to talk about with your girlfriends? No, nah, girl, let me tell you about this motherfucker here. You know, he be on that bullshit. You know, he was fucking with me today. I mean, why the fuck would he do that? He knew better. Why, why y'all always better? leave out the shit that y'all did? As if there isn't a reaction to an action. So, mm. you saying he just woke up and went upside your head? <laughs> like, that's what happened? So, you ain't do nothing. Sorry to jump to, like, going upside your head. But, like, he just woke up and just was... But you gotta be drastic to illustrate yeah, that like, point. Yeah, like, why you gotta... What did you do? You motherfuckers, like... So, y'all perfect. I don't know. I'm gonna tell you. When I tell my girlfriends a story, I leave everything in. If I didn't throw some trash on this car, I'm telling that. Not saying I've ever done that, but I'm just saying... Whatever the shit is, I'm going to tell that part. I mean, because, well, I, fuck it. I did it. I mean, what am I in it for? You can't get good. And this is another thing. How are you getting advice on something and you're leaving out parts of it? I can't give you an accurate opinion or good advice, where wounded advice that could help you if you're leaving shit out. Why do y'all go to motherfuckers for advice that's fucked up? Like, why do you go to the friend who ain't had a man in forever to try to get advice on your relationship? Like, why would you do that? I, I don't understand that. The worst thing that you can do is be going through it with your dude and you go to your girls that don't like your nigga to begin with and try to have rational conversation. They don't like you being in a relationship. Mm -mm. That's just a male's point of view. I, I, that's the worst thing, ladies, that y'all can do. It is the worst thing. If she is in the club every weekend and you... in a a great relationship you don't think that shit fuck with her she gonna smile like she happy for you but she ain't, she ain't happy for you because she ain't happy with herself so why mm -hmm. you know now you can call and you just want to just let some shit off you know what i'm saying okay cool but i hate when i hear i was talking to such and such mm -hmm. and they said mm -hmm. that, what get like who the fuck are they to tell you anything about what we got going on in here you know what's funny though do that either if i was talking to so-and-so that conversation stays there it should that shit can get messy either way girl i was talking to my husband and he said this mm -hmm. or babe i was talking to her and she said this you wrong that's messy as fuck you must not want your relationship to work because your friends ain't gonna like your man your man ain't gonna like your friends i mean that's just too much mm -hmm. y'all be doing too much Yep. Stop. I can't stand a, a motherfucker always bringing back a bone. I can't stand no bitch like that. Always bringing back a bone. <laughs> so what? You think you tough now? You got an entourage? She said. And that shit useless because she's not present saying the shit. Mm -hmm. And so you could be making that up. So it's just crazy either way. Well, my girl said. I don't give a fuck mm -hmm. with short sleeve Steve or barbecue Bob got to say. <laughs> okay. And that is another thing that y'all got to start doing. Stop talking to your male friends about issues you have in your relationship. Because nine times out of ten, he could be your friend, but he'll fuck you if he had the opportunity to. Ooh. Now. Nine times out of ten. Now, there are some, some, some genuine male-female friends. There are some. But those are outliers to me. Because if he had the opportunity to hit, he would. So is he really just your friend? Is he really pulling for you to have a fruitful relationship? If mm. in the back of his mind, like, he'll take you down? It's food for thought. It's food for thought. Stay tuned for the second part of this video. We'll yeah. be back. It's going to get serious. <laughs> Thanks again, once again, for tuning in to Porch Talk. Make sure you like, tag, share a friend. Follow me on Facebook, Love Ebony. Who is Ebony? Instagram, Rocky Road Productions, LLC, Porch Talk. <laughs> and you catch me here every week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thanks, guys.